Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020. This is your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chicken Analytics. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chicken Analytics. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email. Follow along with this show. Get daily stock ideas to consider. It hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So diving right in, U.S. equities were higher on Tuesday, beginning the new month by continuing that strong November trend. Treasuries came under pressure with the curve steepening. The dollar was down against the euro, but stronger against the yen. Gold finished up 2.1%. WTI crude settled down 1.7%. The ISM manufacturing index showed a reading of expansion for the seventh consecutive month, and investors continue to look through near-term headwinds to the prospects of a COVID vaccine. As we get to the desk this morning, uh, slightly uh, downbeat tone, S&P futures down 20 basis points after Asian markets were mixed overnight. Korea and Taiwan hit new record highs. European markets are weaker. Treasuries are slightly stronger following that back up in yields. Yesterday, dollar is stronger on the major crosses. Gold up 60 basis points. We're going to take a look at the GLD chart a little bit later on in the show. WTI crude down 80 basis points to get us going on a Wednesday morning that starts with a new closing high for SPY. And the Qs join the party. Yes, you have to squint. Yes, I should probably use a, a thinner line uh, on, on the Qs. But the simple fact of the matter is QQQ closed above the September highs. Remember what we've been saying. Move through 80 increases the odds of the September highs. And now we've hit it. IWM uh, continues to trade near all-time highs as well. Has support at the 170 level, then 160 below that. For the S&P 500 now, uh, the breakout is starting to build some support at 360. Should probably bump that up in the next day or two. But really, the important level, in my opinion, is around 340 and then below that, 320. I think as long as SPY is above 340, it has upside potential to the $413 range. For those of you following the index, that would be 4,130 or so on the S&P 500 index. So the structure of the market remains intact, uh, moving topside from this consolidations within the context of an existing uptrend. Uh, we have been and remain of the view that odds favor a continuation into the end of the year uh, for this rally that is broadening out. Uh, and it's also global in nature. For those of you who have been following my work, you know, it's not just the US anymore. You're starting to see breakouts uh, in, in country funds, in, in global regions. We right? mentioned earlier that uh, Taiwan and, and Korea uh, trading at new all-time highs. I think that's bullish for the tech space. Those two countries are highly levered to technology. So uh, you're seeing it across the board for equities as an asset class, participation to the upside. Let's drive into our market in a minute now. What are we writing about? Well, Q's joint spy and closing at a record high, and that's uh, encouraging. Centerant remains more greedy than fearful. Energy equipment and services turns bullish and begins to outperform. It's been a very, very long time, as longtime listeners of this show know, uh, that I've had anything good to say about energy. But when the facts change, we change our mind. We'll take a look at the uh, ETF that tracks that group a little bit later on. Gold begins to rebound uh, after reaching the support level that we've been writing about. And as I said, futures point to a slightly lower open here today. Taking a look at the major indices now from a power bar perspective, a lot of green on the screen yesterday to start off December. Dow tax on 60 basis points, four to two bulls to bears. S&P 500 up a percent, 124 to 42 there on the bull bear ratio. NASDAQ outperforms, 17 to nine bulls to bears. Small cap slight underperformer, but still a solidly bullish uh, ratio of bulls to bears, 821 to 161. Bonds down tick, uh, big move lower, especially at the long end of the curve. Bonds down, uh, sending yields higher. Com services, our best sector on the day, up 1.84%. Um, seven to three bulls to bears in that group. So according to the Chicken Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are strongly bullish. And speaking of com services, Stock of the day today is a member of that group. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to go to the, to the household names, if you will. And uh, this one looked compelling to me 
Google or Alphabet. I'll, I'll never really call it Alphabet. It'll always be Google to me, but has a very bullish shake in rating. Strong trend above a rising long-term trend line. It's a strong industry group, interactive media and services. Nice top side breakout and consolidation. I think as long as we're above 1700, uh, it makes sense to be playing for further upside in Google. Uh, taking a look uh, from the bottom up, you can see the rate, the uh, power gauge rating is solidly bullish as it has been since early October. Shortly thereafter, it begins to outperform the market. Overbought, oversold indicator moving higher from an oversold position. Only real knock that I could see here is uh, money flow, which is bearish in the near term, but has been improving over the past few days of trading. So, you know, I'm willing to take a weight of the evidence approach. Um, and when looking at a stock like this and the weight of the evidence, in my opinion, points higher, we have a clear line in the sand at 1700 that would tell us we are wrong. Um, so it, it kind of makes sense to, to look at something like Google here in the near term for looking for ideas or opportunities um, into the end of the year. Ticker symbol G O O G L. Close at 1795, spot 36, up 2.3% to outperform on the day yesterday and part of a group that was market leadership yesterday. Turning to the sector tracker now, movement of the major sectors over the last five days. Well, tech at the top of the list is something we like to see. It's about a quarter of the index. Com services after that big day yesterday uh, moves to the number two slot, and that's where Google resides. Healthcare staples, discretionary, and REITs are all higher. Um, materials uh, been choppy of late on a relative basis. They're lower over the past week of trading. Financials giving a little bit back as well after a strong move. Utilities, mm, not really interested at all. Industrials and energy at the bottom of the list over the past five days as we see some position squaring once again. Industrials, energy, big runs uh, over the past couple of weeks slash months. Uh, and maybe seeing some profit taking there in the near term. But as I said, Energy is uh, starting to look somewhat interesting. Um, we'll take a look at services a little bit later on uh, when we take a look at the charts. Uh, turning now to our industry in focus. Uh, industry in focus is the Dow Jones REIT services. Past six months, it's been an underperformer, lagging the S&P 500 by about 8.7%. Power bar ratio is neutral, 14 bulls, 14 bears, and currently ranked number 16 of 21 subsectors. Now it has moved up two slots over the past week, but realistically, it's a tough group to get excited about. I think, you know, if you're looking for yield, I think you really need to be selective there uh, in what's going on. You certainly want to avoid the very bearish names, names like QTS, letter O and PLD uh, here within that industry group. They're all holdings in the fund. And let's take a look at RWR. This is the SPDR Dow Jones REIT Services ETF. Uh, we can see it as a neutral uh, ETF rating here at Chaikin Analytics. Gets a strong trend for trading above the rising long-term trend line, but really let's call it sideways at best here. Kind of interesting to me because what I'm noticing on a lot of charts are uh, areas where this interim June high has become important. Some stocks, some ETFs, some themes in the market have recently taken out this June high and seeing a personality change to the upside. Those are encouraging. We want to look for those. Uh, this is the opposite. This is uh, RWR trading up to the June high and then fading. And at the same time, uh, continues to be an underperformer and potentially picking up uh, the intensity of that underperformance here in the near term. So that's kind of interesting to me. I think that there's a, you know, there's a, you know, if you're looking for trend changes, um, groups that are above, that June high and outperforming or where you want to focus uh, at, at the same time, you know, groups that are struggling to retake that June high, you probably want to avoid those in the near, near term until they show some better evidence uh, of outperformance. Money flow bearish here, fund is oversold in the near term. So we'll see how it plays out. But those June highs, that interim June high is important for a lot of trends in the marketplace right now. Let's look at the uh, trending names. What's moving and shaking yesterday? LNC quarter and upgraded Credit Suisse sent that stock higher. FLIR, no news, up 5.5%. Western Digital uh, storage space traded well yesterday on the back of Micron increasing their guidance. Western Digital up 5.3% as it goes along for the ride. 
Discover Financial and Cincinnati Financial didn't see anything company specific there to take those stocks up 5.2 and 4.7% respectively. Loser side of the board, some back and forth now, obviously the big M&A announcement, Info and SPGI. Uh, a lot of commentary, a lot of volatility, a lot of position squaring, merger ARB guys coming in, fundamental investors likely getting out, uh, stocks likely to settle in eventually. Uh, but for now, they're trying to find their footing. Both were down yesterday, 5% plus uh, or minus, respectively. No real news on APA, down 4%. Oxy caught a downgrade at UBS, sent that stock lower by 4%, and Etsy was down nearly 4% on the day. Didn't see anything company-specific. Obviously, we're going to be getting a lot of headlines about holiday sales here in the weeks ahead. So let's dive into the charts now. On Wednesdays, we do sentiment, and I mean, I, I don't even know what to say anymore about this uh, CBOE options, uh, the equity option put call ratio, just mired in a position of ex excess greed, will not leave uh, this uh, area that it has been in since the May-June timeframe. I don't know if it's losing its importance as a signal. Obviously, we'll keep an eye on it, uh, but it did trend lower over the past week. So uh, options traders are still bullish. At the same time, take a look at the VIX. The VIX is moving to the downside after that spike a few weeks ago towards 40. It's been a steady decline back towards 20. Now, we have not been below 20 uh, since be since before the pandemic sell-off uh, got underway. So it'd be interesting from a sentiment standpoint to see if that can grind back down below the 20 level to the extent that it continues to trend lower. Obviously, I feel like that would be a tailwind to the bullish equity call here into the end of the year. So, you know, sentiment, I always like to think about sentiment as an environment. You, what kind of environment are we in? It's kind of typically uh, how I view valuation as well, right? Are, are we greedy or are we fearful? Are we rich or, or cheap? Uh, not necessarily a catalyst in and of itself, but important to have an understanding of the environment we're in and the way that investors and traders are, are thinking about the market and more importantly, how they are positioning uh, in the market. I'm not a big fan of sentiment surveys. I'd rather look at what's actually happened. Tell me, um, don't tell me what you're doing. Show me what you're doing with your money. Uh, I think that that's a better signal. Uh, overall. Talking about gold now, gold finds support. Now we've been writing for a few weeks uh, that support for gold or GLD in this case, the SPDR Gold uh, Trust was in the 160 to 165 level. Now we got down to that level on Monday before seeing a gap to the upside to retake a rising 200 day moving average. Uh, rebound also taking place from an oversold position uh, based on the RSI, and we're actually seeing shake and money flow skip back to the bullish side. So I think that if you were looking for your opportunity in GLD, it may be here. At the very least, you have a clearly defined level that you can shoot against, right? So you can say to yourself from a risk management standpoint, as long as GLD is above that 160, 165 buffer zone, it probably makes sense to be thinking about it on the long side. I think in the near term, you could play uh, for 180 and then reevaluate the situation. But it appears that we've now found uh, a near-term support level uh, for GLD, uh, as well as for gold, the commodity probably makes sense to start drilling in on some of the gold miners. Uh, but it's interesting to note that uh, this level has been clearly defined. We've been writing about it for weeks, and we've now hit that level and begun to stabilize. Go back to what I said earlier, gold's actually trading a bit higher here, following through uh, in pre-market trading on, uh, on a Wednesday morning. And let's wrap it up with, you know, as I said, it's been a long time since I've had anything good to say about anything in the energy space, but you know that could be changing. Taking a look at the SPDR S&P oil and gas equipment and services ETF, let's just call it oil services for short. Uh, rating turned bullish this week here at Shaken Analytics. There are seven bullish stocks for zero bearish stocks. You can see now, not quite above those June highs, but taking out the August highs and finding some support, all while the RSI is shifting into bullish ranges, and we're seeing some stabilization and now near-term upside on a relative basis. So 
you know, we, we try not to remain dogmatic in our views. When it looks like the facts are changing or when the facts aren't changing, you know, you have to kind of change your mind. So I think it's hard to be dogmatically bearish uh, on the energy space here in the near term. That's going to wrap us up. Take us for a test drive, chickenanalytics.com forward slash test drive. Have an amazing Wednesday. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.